With more IoT devices than ever and billions more on the way, how could the Internet of Things go from digital assistant to technological death eater? That was my question. I asked Tara Wheeler. She's the principal security advisor at Red Queen Technologies. She actually made it make sense. These Internet of Things devices could actually be formed into what's called that botnet. How does it work? Well, the Mirai botnet is a great example of this. Uh, what it was was a, a network of devices all running the Linux operating system that used a default set of usernames and passwords. Now, the reason that's important is because even though a device that could be infected by the Mirai botnet, such as an internal camera, surveillance camera, or any other internet-connected device running Linux, um, you could shut off those devices and immediately it would be disconnected from the Mirai botnet. In fact, it would actually get rid of the software itself. However, if the default passwords were not changed, the device would be reinfected again. So the key there is all of those devices, including in-home cameras, were part of the Mirai botnet because the people using them didn't change the default passwords. The thing, Tara, that comes into my mind when you say that is Game of Thrones, uh, how you know, we have these others, maybe these five to eight guys who are really bad uh, taking over the bodies of these people who become walkers and then are their minions. And that in my mind is, seems like what you're describing. These few bad actors then somehow take over all these different IoT devices that become their bots and just take over everything. Uh, imagine the act of dying and being able to become one of the others as having default passwords. Don't have default passwords. It makes you eligible to become a white walker. So... The, the nature of botnets is that it looks for the, the software itself that's going to harvest some of the computing capacity and breach the security of those devices, looks for specific vulnerabilities. Once they have control of whatever this is, uh, let's say it's a camera, let's say it's your light bulb, what do they do with it? It does seem more common right now for people who have this amount of computing power to use it for mining cryptocurrency, for um, harvesting interesting information about high value targets overall, and for data mining. Instead of going over to your neighbor's house and borrowing a cup of sugar, it's like stealing a tablespoon of sugar from 10 million people. It may not hurt any individual person that badly, but overall, it is a spectacularly huge theft. The parents buying a great toy for their kid would, just, would like the lowest possible cost for that toy. The makers want to try to drive the price down to be competitive in the market. The truth is that neither one of those parties is harmed by that Internet of Things enabled device, a doll or a toy, being part of the Mirai botnet. It doesn't hurt them. So what is the incentive for them to make sure that that device is secure? It's very low. What are some simple one, two, threes that I can do? Absolutely. Your absolute number one priority is change your default passwords. Make sure that the devices that you bring into your house don't have a simple admin password. The second thing, make sure that all of your uh, devices and web accounts have not only strong and different passwords stored in a password manager, but where available, always enable two-factor authentication. Last but not least, make sure that security is a priority in your company, in your home, with all the devices, with all the accounts that you have. It's wonderful to have these amazing new techniques and toys and products and companies that can make sure that we are innovative and disruptive in technology. But if we don't prioritize security, we're going to find those products, those devices and those new toys coming back and biting us in the heel.